Hi, I'm Kiki Saint-Ange. And I'm Yulia Klein, and we're both program managers on the Windows Native Platform. Today, we're going to talk to you about building cross-platform dual-screen experiences using React Native. As you likely already know, React Native is a framework developed by Facebook that combines the best parts of native development with React, as well as best in-class JavaScript libraries for building user experiences. You can leverage familiar tools from the web to create apps whose primitives render to native platform UI. React Native was originally created for mobile devices targeting iOS and Android. And Microsoft has extended React Native's reach to also work well on Windows. Because Windows supports a greater variety of input devices, we have done work to improve support for keyboard, mouse, and ink. We're also working on new dual screen components, which we'll discuss a little bit later on. Of course, everybody wants buttery smooth input, both for touch, ink, mouse, and so we have invested quite a bit of effort with performance in mind. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, we're working closely with Facebook and the rich and diverse React Native community to bring these changes back into the React Native core platform. This means our roadmap, code, and issues are all being worked out in the open um, on GitHub. So let me tell you a little bit about the background of how we, we got here. The React Native Windows platform has actually been around for a number of years. Originally, it came out in 2016. Some of the React Native apps running on Windows today were written in this original platform that we internally refer to as vCurrent. To help keep up with the rapid changes that Facebook is making to the core platform and to ensure the highest performance, we rewrote the React Native Windows platform in C++ at the beginning of 2019. We're actively working on this vNext version and are excited to announce a new release. We've updated React Native for Windows to take advantage of the high-performance modern C++ core. This is the same core that iOS and Android use and helps ensure that you get the very best performance when you build a React Native for a Windows app. So some of the things that we wanted to highlight is why we chose React Native and why we chose to jump on this bandwagon of React Native for Windows. And to really help emphasize why we made that decision, we want to highlight some of the pillars that we think make React Native awesome and the developer benefits around them. The first one is the fact that you can use both JavaScript and TypeScript to build your app. So this means if you're coming from the web and you have lots of web service calls, you have lots of business logic that you've written for your web app, you can port that pretty much one-to-one -one into your React Native app and then run it on those target devices, and that same logic will persist. You also have, as Yulia mentioned, fully native apps running on your devices with fully native experiences. So what you see here is a breakdown of a layer cake of how that works. You have your React Native UI, which is where your TypeScript or JavaScript sits and where you write all of your logic. Then that translates through a React Native API layer and then runs natively on the device that you're targeting, either that be iOS or Android or Windows. And what we're doing in React Native for Windows is we're taking that React Native API layer and we're making that C++ and we're making that really fast and we're making it translate great for all of the devices that you want to target, whether that's a desktop, a dual screen device, or anything else that we release. But to really help highlight what that means and how that translation works, I'm going to show you a little bit of code. So what we have here, if you're familiar with HTML or XML, is React Native syntax for defining how to lay out your, your app. So in this case, it's, it's, it's abstract on purpose. And in this case, we have a picker. And inside that, we want to choose between three different colors. So when this piece of code is run, say, on an iOS device, you get the familiar dial-like feel. So if you ever used iOS device and you have your reminders, you might be familiar with this look. If you run the same piece of code on Android, you get the material design feel. You get the animations, the flyout, and everything that you would expect as a user on an Android device. Lastly, if you run this on a Windows device, you get that fluent design feel, the desktop-centric experience, and the awesome effects that you get running on a Windows device. So when we see this line of code that's written in that HTML-like syntax, it gets translated through either to Java or to Objective-C or to C++ if you're running on a Windows device. It maps up to the correct native components. You get all of that performance and experience that your users expect when they use those devices. But you yourself are writing one single code base, which is either JavaScript or TypeScript. 
And lastly, there's something that we like to really emphasize, which is called the web-like developer experience. And this is basically hot reload. And if you've ever built a web app, you may notice that you usually have your uh, code on one side and your web page on the other. And you make some changes, you hit save, and your browser automatically updates those changes. So if you need to move anything to the left or to the right, you can see those changes pretty much instantly. But to help really illustrate what I mean by this point, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of a demo on our Android dual screen device. So what we have here is my Android dual screen emulator. I've already launched my React Native app on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a demo of Hot Reload and how that looks on an Android dual screen device. So right here, I'm going to edit this line of text. Say hello. I'm on dual screen. I'm going to hit Save. You can see a little refresh there. But it's a lot faster than that. And I've automatically updated right to the changes that I wanted to do. And you can see how this can extend to more things than just text. You just saw some of the great benefits of using React Native to develop cross-platform apps. And you may be wondering how to enhance your apps to have a great experience on dual-screen devices. These new devices have two screens and other unique physical char characteristics, like hinges and a seam. These physical characteristics require rethinking how you approach your app design. Let's drill in on the capabilities of one of the new components Microsoft is building to make your work easier. When a user launches your app, the app will open on a single screen. At any point, the user has the option to span the app across both screens. You want to leverage the larger area to fully immerse the user in your app. For that reason, we're introducing a new two-pane view component. So this is a component that assists with layout, and it itself has awareness of the theme built in. Uh, it provides two panes for content and allows you to specify a pane priority, which dictates which of the two panes will be visible when space is limited and the app is in single screen. So Kiki is going to show you a very early prototype of this particular component in action. Absolutely. So here I have my Windows 10X Neo emulator up and running. So I'm going to open my React Native for Windows app right here. And what Yuli was mentioning a little bit earlier is that you have an app that opens on one side of the screen. And then when the user wants to span it, the purpose of two-pane view is to be aware of that as well as to move your content and show you extra rich information on the other pane. So this is an enhancement to an already great app experience that you might have. So in this case, a little bit of an example here is maybe if you had a mail app of some sort. So you can change and edit things on one side and it will reflect that automatically because this is all the same app. All it's doing is being aware of the fact that you've spanned the full pane. So let's take a look at what you'd have to change in your JavaScript in order to get this. So right here, we have our, our render function. And in that render function is where the React Native HTML-like layout syntax goes. So I've defined my banner at the top, which if we go back here, you'll notice is this green one right here. Then I have my master list and my details list. And right here, I've created, I've wrapped around the two pane view around my view components. And view components in React Native are sort of what define large panes of content in your app. So I have my two pane view here. I've specified pane priority A, which in this case is this left pane. So when I open it, it opened on that side. And then my details list, since it's defined second, is where the extra information goes when that app fully spans. And this is all that I needed to change in order to make my regular React Native app that would normally be run on a desktop or laptop device work great on a Windows 10x dual screen device. So two-pane view is one example of a higher level component that we are currently creating. We're also looking at some lower level APIs um, to provide additional device in info as well as usable regions. Um, various aspects that you may want to leverage in your app in case you feel that two-pane view is insufficient for the type of work you're trying to accomplish. Um, all of this is going to be available in the React Native dual screen repo. Uh, we will make NPM modules available, and uh, we welcome your, your feedback both on the specs as well as uh, 
final work that we will be shipping. In general, please do check out these, these links. Uh, we have great information about getting started with React Native, React Native for Windows, React Native for dual screen in particular, as well as simply dual screen device information. So two pane view is one example of a higher level component that we're currently building. We're also looking into a lower level API that will provide uh, more basic information about whether the device is a dual screen device, whether it, the app is currently spanned, as well as the information about usable regions. Um, all of these components will be available in the React Native dual screen repo. And in general, we invite you to to come find us on GitHub, leave us feedback, and learn more about getting started with React Native for dual screen, React Native for Windows, and of course, um, in general, how to design your dual screen apps. Thanks for watching, and I really can't wait to see what you build.